you've already seen my top 10 best movies of 2014. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. But now, let's look at the big giant pile of crap of movies that was made this past year. Happy New Year, everybody! Number 10. Cabin Fever, Patient Zero. The reason this isn't like number one or whatever, which it should be, is because this movie wasn't really in theaters or wasn't anything really popular. Matter of fact, a big portion of the population doesn't even know about this movie. The only reason I'm mentioning this movie is because it's part of a big franchise directed by Ty West, but Cabin Fever, about a group of teens who gets this, who gets infected with a skin-eating virus, and antics start. I'm not going to go in major depth of this movie. The first one was a great horror classic, and Cabin Fever will be remembered for that. The second one, I feel like they were trying to take something that was already good and try and expand it into something that, what? The second one was all over the place, and the third one just just puts the final nail in the coffin that this franchise is just going downhill. A big proof of that is that you can find this movie on Netflix. And you know how Netflix has a rating system of where you can see how popular the movie is? Where from one to five stars? This movie is half a star. Half a star. Not even a full one star. It's half a star out of five. Number nine. Tammy. Okay. It's good to see a comedy film that isn't... that... isn't mainly funny because of Kevin Hart or Seth Rogen or something like that, or some other male as the lead role. No, this one, no, don't get me wrong, the lead actress in this movie does a fantastic job. But, like, literally, I feel like she was robbed in this movie because, literally, in the, from what you knew about the movie before going in there, it was about a woman who was robbing some fast food store. Yeah, yeah. And even the theatrical poster is her wearing some fast food uniform in front of the fast food restaurant. I see you. Don't sell me, Ed. Please. I want to stay here with you. We love you, Ed. Yeah, that's what we were expecting. That was only 5% of the movie. This movie was all over the place that literally I didn't even know what to think of it. And by the end of this movie, I could care less about all the characters. The characters I did not care for whatsoever. And it, it almost robbed the entire movie. It was literally the lead actress that made this movie as good as it was. But not good enough to get it off this list. Number 8. Sharknado 2. Sharknado 2. Yeah, um... The first one got very popular. Wasn't... Maybe like... It was released in like maybe... A few theaters around the world for like maybe a day or two. Yeah, the movie got so much praise before it even came out that a sequel was announced. And now a third one's coming out. You know what? I don't even have to describe this movie to you to tell you how bad it is. Literally, I'm gonna go by the theatrical poster of one of the Sharknado movies where the quote is, Nuff said? Yeah. Sharknado. Nuff said. Number seven. Sex tape. You know, I don't even feel like I have to explain this one much either. 
I mean, it's just a movie that's pretty much describing... I don't know. What? Like... You and your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, however the way you roll, are making love, boinking the Yankees, having sex. Oh yeah! You decide to film it just because you want to get a little kinky, and then you accidentally upload it online for the whole world to see. Literally, this is done so much in real life, I would just have to go on TV and watch, I don't know, watch Big Fish, TMZ, or something other. This movie is pretty much... I just wasn't that impressed by it. Number six. Annabelle. Annabelle. It was... Uh, this movie takes everything that we've already seen in horror films and tries to exemplify it. There's really not much scary about a living doll. There's really not. Literally, I was watching this movie and I wasn't entertained. I wasn't feeling tense. I wasn't on the edge of my seat, which I feel like I should be for a horror film. The only movie about a living doll that's interested me was Dead Silence. And Annabelle fell very short of topping Dead Silence. Number five. Noah. Noah. Freak. Forget this movie. I feel like if you do a movie about a biblical character, I feel like, and I feel like if you make me hate the biblical character that you are trying to portray in this movie, that you make him seem so bad. I feel like the movie is failing at what it's supposed to do. This movie makes me so mad. There are no words in any language that can describe how much I despise this movie. Sharknado, enough said. Number four. If I stay. If I stay. Literally, I walked into this movie feeling like, I don't know, I was going through a hard time with, let's just say, I was already experiencing a bad breakup, separation at the time, and I was not looking forward to seeing a love story. Literally, this movie didn't hurt me at all. That's how bad of a love story this is. Actually, I don't even know if I can call it a love story. It's, this movie didn't even stay in theaters as long. It went straight to Netflix and Redbox faster than I could go see it. Literally, this movie is like, it's an out of body experience. Like, this girl is in between life and death after a car accident. And we see flashbacks before the car accident, which is just her meeting some guy, and her trying to get into Juilliard, and her and this guy, their relationship, how it forms, and them breaking up because she wants to go to Juilliard. Literally, their relationship is so boring. I feel like a rock and a piece of grass could blossom a better love story than these two. And that's saying something. The girl's played by Hit Girl. Chloe Martez? Yeah, you know it. You know it. It was so irritating. Like, literally, this... Spoiler alert, and if you care, if you even care for me to ruin if I stay for you, believe me, I'm saving you. The girl gives up seeing her family and being with her family in heaven to be with a guy who is a 
dick and broke up with her because she was trying to go to school? No, oh, this movie... It wasn't... It wasn't written bad. It was just so boring. It wasn't even like lovey-dovey awesome or anything which makes love stories... I don't know, love stories. This didn't even feel like a love story. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't anything. There was no emotion whatsoever in this movie. Number three. Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. <laughs> oh, literally, I never understood why people talk bad about the Transformers movies. I actually enjoy the Transformers movies. I like the first one. I even like the second one. The third one was really good, in my opinion. So, literally, I thought the fourth one would be amazing for what it was portraying. No, it was just a Michael Bay wet dream. It was Michael Bay singing, sitting, it was like you were just sitting there in a group of, I don't know how many people, and it was just a, with Michael Bay on the screen splooging on the entire audience. That's what you were watching. That's what you were watching. There are so many explosions, I lost count of how many explosions there were. Literally, I got bored of explosions watching this movie. How can you do that? Literally, Transformers 4 was a... It was disappointing to me. And literally, I swear, if they continue to make Transformers movies, I really hope Michael Bay does something to improve from this wet dream of his. I really hope so. Number two. Annie. Okay, honestly, I didn't even expect this movie to be good before I saw it. I was literally I was literally preparing myself for this movie, thinking, okay, it could be good, it could be good. The original Annie, it was good, I liked Annie. This is Black Annie, but literally I don't know what to expect. Exactly right there, Black Annie. The black version of Annie. I don't know if like they felt like they needed to be racially diverse making this movie, considering I don't remember anyone from the original Annie being black. Literally, I feel like Jamie Foxx as Daddy Warbucks... I don't know, Jamie Foxx did play a good Electro, he played a good Django from Django Unchained, but him as Daddy Warbucks... Uh, no. And the Annie in this movie was a cute kid, but... Uh, I don't know. This movie was not really captivating, and I really didn't care much for it, even watching it. I wasn't caring much for the characters. I didn't even care about what was going on. This movie didn't captivate me at all. And I swear, ten years down the road, if they make another Annie... Uh, actually, I don't even know. I don't even know if they should remake Annie again. There was nothing wrong, really, with the original for what it was. Uh, it's just like... It's just like the second Christmas story. Like, why did they do it? Why did they do it? Or Mean Girls 2, why did you do it? Why? Now, if they make a remake of The Breakfast Club, I will definitely go see that. In a heartbeat. Before we announce the top one worst movie of 2014. Let's talk about other things that probably, other movies that should be on this list, but caught a break. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Yeah, wasn't made in 2014, or, or was released in 2014. Back before even the year 2000. It's still a horrible movie. 
Ride along. Ride along. I feel it was an alright movie. I enjoyed it. But if you take Kevin Hart out of the movie, the movie is all over the place. It's stupid, really. It's not really that interesting. Not really cared much about it. It's funny how literally in the top 10 best movies, Ice Cube was a cop in that. And now in the top worst movies, Ice Cube isn't a cop in one of these movies, too. <laughs> Schmidt, fuck the captain's daughter. Schmidt, fuck the captain's daughter. Schmidt, fuck the captain's daughter. I ready? Super Mario Brothers the movie. Super Mario Brothers the movie. Once again, not made in 2014. It's just still an awful movie to this day. Paranormal Activity the Marked One. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy, I love the paranormal activities. I'm not a huge fan of found footage films, but, but literally, paranormal activities, movies I enjoy. The fifth one, ah, oh gosh. This movie would have been on the list if it wasn't for one thing. Shotgun Rain! Yeah, literally. They use guns in this movie. <laughs> Finally, they actually start trying to fight back. Number one. And the number one worst movie of 2014 is... Drum roll, please. Frozen. I know what you're thinking. Once again, this movie wasn't released in 2014. <laughs> it was actually released in 2013, but the reason that this movie is on this list is because of one particular reason. Let it go, let it go. I can't hold it back anymore. Oh, not the night. Let it go, let it go, can't hold the back anymore. Now I'm so nice, not a friend. 2014 has been known for that one song. That one song that I've heard redone so many times on the internet, on the radio. You can walk outside and your neighbor, Big Bob, Billy Joe, whatever the fuck, is singing this song. I am so done. I am so done with this song. Uh, anyone want to... Uh, what were the worst movies for you for 2014? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know what else you want to see in the on the real talk. I'm gonna J Will's gonna uh, do it like a big thing. Yeah. Yeah.